Now we will look at how talent management can be used as OD intervention. Briefly speaking, talent management is attraction, development and retention of human capital. So there are three key processes involved in the talent management. Number one, coaching and mentoring. Number two, leadership and management development programs. And number three, career planning and development. Coaching is a specialized form of OD and perhaps the fastest growing area of OD practice. Those who are more interested about it, they can visit the website coachfederation.org. It is the website of the International Coach Federation. ICF or International Coach Federation does the accreditation of the business coaches. So coaching essentially involves guided inquiry, active listening, reframing, appreciative inquiry, etc. Coaching is not telling people what should be done and how it should be done directly. It is about making people to reflect on their own behavior, asking a specific question to the people which will make them reflect on their specific performance or behavior in a specific situation. This is a simple interpretation of the process called guided inquiry. Second aspect of mentoring is active listening. Many a time coaches are engaged for very bright and high potential executives. Generally, when organization pay for the coach, they generally engage coaches for a high potential employee. These high potential employees or managers may have the solutions of their problem, but they need someone to talk about those and coaches provide the active listening to these managers and in the process of active listening managers also get insights about their work and about their performance. Another aspect of coaching is reframing. We look at some situation as a problem. The same situation can be looked at as opportunity as well. Many a time it does not happen naturally. To make this process happen, coach can be a very important and powerful medium. They can make people to see situation in different light and that can help the people to identify the creative, innovative, bold or of the beat ways of addressing that situation. Appreciative inquiry is something which we have already discussed in the previous session. We all know appreciative inquiry is based on a basic assumptions that organizations or people are not the problems to be solved but miracles to be embraced. So appreciative inquiry starts with asking what are the life giving forces to the individual, to the group or to the system. Appreciative inquiry is completed through discovery, dream, design and delivery or destination phase. There are three major reasons for the coaching engagement in an organization. According to the HBR study, the top three reasons for engaging in a coaching work are developing high potential or facilitating and transition. Second, acting as sounding board, what we discussed in the active listening and addressing derailing behavior of the leaders or managers. Developing high potential or facilitating the transition is the number one reason why coaching as a OD intervention is used. That simply means transition from one organization to another organization or transition from one function to another function or transition from a specific function to the general management role. Mostly coaching is required when people reach to the top post in their function and then they are given opportunity for the general management. They might be very good for working in their specific function like finance, HR or marketing. So they may not be as comfortable in the general management role where they are in charge of all or many other departments. This kind of transaction 
is very crucial for people to move to the top management level and this is the situation where coaching is found to be very useful and that's why it is number one reason for engaging the business coaches second reason is need for sounding board what we discussed in the active listening that active listening and sounding board role is being provided by the coaches and that is the second reason why they are why coaching is used as od intervention so third reason for using coaching as od intervention is to address the derailing behavior of the leaders these managers and leaders though are high potential people they might be lacking in some specific aspects of their roles at the higher level which they themselves are not being able to recognize and are not able to practice in these kind of situations coaches can help them to look at their own dysfunctional behavior and prevent the derailing of the managers and leaders within the talent management aspect another method of od intervention can be management and leadership development interventions management and leadership development interventions are used to enhance the knowledge skill or attitude of the employees attitude of the managers management development programs or leadership development programs which in the short form called mdp and ldp are focused on the leaders and managers knowledge skill and attitude ldps and mdps are conducted in the large number of forms they are conducted as a in house program they can be conducted as in class program outdoor programs project coaching action learning projects etc before we talk about the different methods of ldp and mdps so what are the leadership competencies identified in indian context are as follows ability to visualize and articulate a path to the future meaning having a vision having a strategic thinking second ability to inspire and take the accountability and demonstrating entrepreneurial spirit it means leaders need to inspire others they need to take the accountability of the performance and they need to have the entrepreneurial temperament it means they need to be actively involved in innovation risk taking and people development third is ability to spot and nurture talent very rarely leaders and management can get teams where people are already competent and performing at their optimal potential they need to invest time and effort to bring up the performance of their team members and to become a valued member of that team so that requires leaders to spot the talent and nurture the talent fourth competency found to be very critical in indian context is crafting and deploying business practices that further the business goals it simply means ability to translate the strategic direction and strategic objectives into the operational procedures and systems and policies A strategy cannot be implemented without right processes systems and policies and that is a very important competency of leadership found to be crucial in indian context next is ability to optimize the organizational structure and articulate core values same job can be accomplished with a different type of organizational design so we discussed about the organization design as functional divisional matrix innovative designs like team based designs virtual uh, virtual organization design etc etc what is the most optimal organization design to accomplish the task in a profitable way is a very important competency next is ability to understand the competitive market and manage external stakeholders and relationship we all know that business operate in a larger society the business has to keep interacting with the regulators and the government they need to 
identify the ways of interacting with the different stakeholders and establishing a functional relationship with them. These are the critical leadership competencies identified in Indian context. How a management development or leadership development program is implemented? Invariably, LDP and MDP start with need assessment. You might remember we discussed the diagnosis as a very important component of OD intervention. So, MDP or LDP start with the organizational, group or individual level diagnostic study. That diagnostic study result in identification of need for development at these levels. Needs are then converted into the specific learning objectives. Bloom's taxonomy is very useful to identify the action related or knowledge related uh, learning objectives. For example, Bloom's taxonomy gives a typology of learning at the cognitive level. In a cognitive level, learning can happen in the form of remembering or in the form of understanding, in the form of application, analysis, evaluation and creativity. So, using the Bloom's taxonomy, appropriate learning objectives can be identified for the LDP or MDP. After identifying the learning objectives, next step is instruction design. So, instruction designing can be done more scientifically with the help of Kolb's learning cycle. Kolb learning cycle says that learning happens by acquisition of information and transformation of the information. Acquisition of the information can happen through concrete experience or abstraction. Transformation of the information can take place through observation or by experimentation. So, the combination of the ways of collecting information and transforming that information result in different learning style. So, the people with the different learning style prefer different ways of learning. So, some people are more comfortable in the project based learning, some people are more comfortable with the lecture based learning, some people learn better by reflecting on different aspects of a problem or some people need to have a very clear first concrete experience to get them engaged in learning process. If we look at the different type of training methods or management education methods like case study, project, lecture, simulation, all these are catering to different aspects of learning cycle. So, once we know the learning objectives, the next step is to convert those learning objectives into the specific learning exercise and that learning exercise has to be identified according to the Bloom's taxonomy and the core learning cycle. The learning exercises can be integrated using the Kolb learning cycle and specific learning exercises can be identified using Bloom's taxonomy. Then comes the next stage which is validation. You after doing need analysis, you develop the learning objectives, you make the instruction design, but that inst instruction design has to be validated by the different stakeholders. We talk to different stakeholders about what should be included in MDP and LDP and that is done in the stage 1 that is need assessment. Those stakeholder can tell whether their concerns are being addressed in the design or not. After the validation comes the delivery of the program. Delivery of the MDP and LDP can be done in the combination of the in class session, group work, action learning project, simulation and many other available techniques and methods. After delivery comes impact assessment. Kirkpatrick model is the most famous model to evaluate the impact of the interventions. So, the evaluation can be done at four levels. Number one reaction level that simply means how participants reacted after attending the program. It is more like immediate feedback. 
Second level of the Kirkpatrick model talks about learning. The definition of learning over here is modification in the mental models. Have participants understood things in different way? Have they identified the different ways of performing their task or looking at the situation? That learning at the third level translates into behavior. Behavior means how they behave differently, which is more aligned to their own well-being and more aligned to the organizational objectives. And the last level of Kirkpatrick model talks about the result, the business result or operational efficiency related results achieved through the intervention. So, a MDP and LDP goes through these six steps from the need assessment to the impact assessment and that can be a very comprehensive OD intervention. Another component in the talent management related OD intervention is career planning and development. This has become very important with the emergence of knowledge economy, knowledge workers are have emerged. The knowledge workers do not identify primarily with the organization. But when people identify themselves more with the profession and less with the organization, then they expect their organization to help them to grow in their career. And career planning has become a very important way of enhancing employee engagement and organizational effectiveness. Now, we will look at how career planning and development can be done as an OD intervention. For that, we need to recognize that people go through different stages in their career. According to the most popular classification, the career of a person goes through establishment, advancement, maintenance and withdrawal stage. At each level, their questions and concern about their career and life are different. So, when we use career planning and development as OD intervention, we need to be conscious of what are the most important and concerns of employees in that particular stage of career. For example, in the establishment stage, when person just starts his career, her career planning needs to include exploration and development of her capabilities. So, a OD intervention should facilitate the people in the establishment stage to explore and develop their capabilities. At this stage, people need more frequent feedback. They are exploring the different possibilities. They look at different avenues to build their career. So, they need to also be given a more frequent feedback so that they can align their interest and competency with the right line of career. From the mid 20s or late 20s to uh, up to 40s, early 40s, advancement stage in the career comes. So, at this stage, employees look for exposure in their profession. They look for advancement. At this stage, they need less feedback. So, the need of autonomy increases. And this is also the time when generally people are growing up their families. So, this is the time OD intervention pertaining to career planning and development also need to look at how they can integrate the career choices and the personal life. So, a lot of women workers have to leave their jobs in the late 20s or early 30s in their career. And many of them join back in the mid in their late 30s stage. So, they need to be accommodated through reskilling, through confidence building and other facilities. Next stage comes the maintenance stage, which is generally which generally starts from early 40s till uh, late 50s or 60s. At this stage, people generally look for maintaining their position. If they are enjoying their work, they generally like to maintain their position and grow slowly in their career. If they are not enjoying, they also look for the 
opportunity to redirect their career path. This is also a time when they enjoy developing younger employees. So, OD intervention need to provide the opportunity for the people who are in the maintenance stage to maintain their position or to redirect their career path. Then comes the withdrawal stage. Generally, people are in the withdrawal stage of their career around 60 and after that. At this stage, the role of OD intervention is helping to uh, helping to explore and develop the interest outside of the work. Employee need to be helped to identify their interest at the outside of their job, which they can joyfully pursue post retirement. This stage also involves preparation and planning for retirement that includes career planning, also includes financial planning. So, in the career planning stage for the people at the withdrawal stage, if employees are prepared and given opportunity to develop their younger colleagues, that is very satisfying to them and that is how their talent can be still used in the organization. So, these are the ways how the career planning can be done at the different stages of the career of the employees. So, we conclude today's session by a quick recap. In the today's session, we look at HR function as OD intervention. Within that, we, we, we looked at performance management and talent management. Within performance management, we looked at goal setting, appraisal and reward system can be used as OD intervention. Within the talent management, we discussed about how coaching and mentoring, MDP and LDP and career planning can be used as OD intervention. Thank you.